Now, with only hours to live, Marie Antoinette prepared for her final ordeal. Weak and exhausted, she summoned her remaining strength to write her sister-in-law. October 16th, 4.30 in the morning. I have just been condemned to death, but not to a shameful one, since this death is shameful only to criminals. I am calm, as people are, whose conscience is clear. I know how much my little boy must have made you suffer. Forgive him, my dear sister. Remember how young he is, and how easy it is to make a child say whatever one wants, to put words he does not understand into his mouth. I send you my heartfelt love, and also to my poor, dear children. How heartbreaking it is to leave them forever. Adieu. Adieu. The letter ends abruptly. It was never sent. As the tumbrel made its way across Paris, the horses walked slowly. Marie Antoinette, one revolutionary said, should drink long of death. 30,000 soldiers stood guard. Mobs lined the streets, hurling insults. The whore, one newspaper reported, was audacious and insolent to the very end. Her dignity was so great that when she was taken in this rough cart, no carriage for her, uh, to the place of execution, the newspapers dared not write afterwards that she'd been cowardly, that she'd shrieked and cried, as they liked writing about aristocrats. They had to say that she'd been dignified. So they said it was the, the pride of a habitual criminal. Il y a un crayon de David qui montre une très vieille femme que l'on conduit à la guillotine avec un courage extraordinaire et une dignité euh, incroyable. She showed no sign of fear. Some people achieve miracles of, of decent self-control and compassion. At that moment, which must be an incredible moment of panic, she still reflects perfect form. She climbed the stairs to the guillotine very lightly, without a pause. A sort of natural heroism. She did die as a queen. It was noon. With the blade suspended above her, Marie Antoinette moved forward and accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot. Pardon me, sir. I did not do it on purpose. Antoinette's severed head was held high before a screaming crowd. She was buried in an unmarked grave. Ce qui la place véritablement dans la légende, c'est cette mort affreuse. Il y a mythe parce que c'était une femme frivole qui s'est transformée bien malgré elle et parce que sa vie s'est achevée 
par une abominable tragédie. She's gone on a very long journey through hell and back. And with each defeat and each disaster, behave with transcendent courage. But as a queen, she is a catastrophe because she makes a constitutional monarchy impossible. A relatively peaceful transition from an old world of an absolute monarchy to a new world of a constitutional monarchy is screwed. That door is closed. All of our own natural humane response to her being someone who behaves with a growing sense of tragic intelligence does not compensate. It's tragedy for France, but it's also in the Greek sense of tragedy being no way out, of playing out your destiny. It is indeed deeply a personal tragedy. It's a story which goes between two extremes. She was a girl whose destiny is the happiest possible destiny. All she wanted and all she created was made from flowers and uh, sounds. It's a vanishing kingdom. By the end, everything she had is taken away from her. Everything and everybody she loved.